let's be honest, in this day and age, do you really want to have email problems? There's a lot bigger problems going on in business right now without you know, having email causing you an issue. I'm Mark Riddell from M3 Networks. We are an IT support and cybersecurity specialist because we know that running a business is hard enough as it is right without IT causing more headaches and frustration, which is why we aim to make IT an enjoyable experience for our customers. If you'd like to find out more about what we do, check us out at m3networks.co.uk. In this episode, I'm going to be talking about the five essential IT systems that every business must get right. If you follow this podcast, you're probably aware that I talk a lot about cybersecurity on this show, and that's because it's the single biggest threat to every business right now. But for today, I'm going back to the basics. Whenever I meet with a potential new customer, I always ask them the same basic questions about their IT systems. There's absolutely no point in asking anything too technical because one, they probably won't be able to answer it, and two, It's very early in the relationship, so we've just not built enough trust of them yet. At this stage, we're just trying to get a feel for whether we'd be a good fit for each other. So the things I'm going to talk about today are usually covered during the initial discovery session that we have with a potential new customer. And typically, this is only the second time that we've been speaking to them. And by this stage, we'll already know some basic information, such as how many locations they have in the business, the number of computers in the business, and whether they have on-premise servers or if they've migrated fully to the cloud. But here's an overview of the five areas that I ask every new prospect about. And number one is internet connectivity. Number two is their email and communications, which I'll cover in a second. Number three is their data store. Number four, their backup system, and number five, their phone system. Starting with internet connectivity, this is an important one because quite often the speed and the type of internet connection you have determines what kind of technology solutions are available to your business. So if you're in an area where you've got really slow or really intermittent internet connections, then of course migrating fully to the cloud is going to be quite difficult. So it's good to get an understanding of what kind of internet connectivity the business has. Now, sometimes we might have already looked this information up because of course we know the address of the business and we might have used our broadband checker tools to see what connectivity is available in that area just so we come prepared with some information because people are only getting what they pay for, right? And quite often they just don't know what else is available to them in their area. So if they're on a basic BT fiber circuit that's just not quite fast enough for where the business is at, they might not realize that they could potentially get something like a lease line and then that opens up other opportunities to them. Of course, comes with additional costs, but you need to know what's available in the first place before you could get to the point of making that decision. So this is a fairly simple one to cover off. We just want to find out if their internet connection has caused them any problems in the business. The next essential IT system that you have to get right, and this is one I see businesses that have made a lot of bad decisions on in the past is their email system and even now in 2022 I see businesses that are using an email system that's just not fit for purpose. Now you may have remember things like POP and IMAP which was out of date I would say email systems where when you configured your phone you had to put in incoming outgoing servers and all sorts of technical information and then if you created folders in Outlook, they wouldn't sync back to the server. So there was just no full synchronization. And let's just be honest, it's just not fit for purpose anymore. All businesses are pretty much using Office 365. The cost of it makes it a bit of a no-brainer as far as I'm concerned. Of course, there's other alternatives such as Google. But I'll be honest, every single business that I've worked with that has been using Google Apps or Google Workspace or whatever they've used has always decided to migrate over to Microsoft 365 at some point down the line. Because let's be honest, in this day and age, do you really want to have email problems? There's a lot bigger problems going on in business right now without having email causing you an issue. And I've thrown the communications word in the bundle of with email because email is obviously a communication tool, but other communication tools that are important in business, things like Microsoft Teams, for example, the world has pretty much been living in Teams for the last couple of years as far as I'm concerned. So when you move to Microsoft 365, of course, Teams is going to be part of your license in there. 
So using the Microsoft Teams for your internal communication is really critical if you've got staff working in different locations, working from home, and also a lot of business-to-business meetings have been happening over Teams. And as well as the video calling aspect, the instant chat messaging for your internal communications, I know has been huge here at M3 because rather than sending emails, which we would have done in the past, or sending a text message, of course, using Teams means that the audit trail is within an environment that's controlled by your business. It's there forever. You can search it, you can scroll back, you can share files in it, you can do all sorts of things. And there's loads of other applications out there that you're probably using already that integrate with Teams that you're probably not using the integration, but you'll find out that they can integrate with Teams, which means you can bring other systems and other data right into your Teams environment. So now the next thing I ask about is your data store. Where is the business storing its data? Now this is quite often a question that people struggle with because they will say things like, yeah, we've got SharePoint and 365 or we've got Dropbox or we've got a little network attached storage device. But the reality is, is that for most businesses, their data is really spread all over the place in many different areas. And the worrying thing for business owners is that they don't actually know where all their data lives. And this is something that's really important because if you don't know where your data is, it becomes very difficult to back that up. We're going to talk about backup in a second, but it's really important to ensure that all your business data has been stored in one place. So it's have this big data store, one version of the truth in a central location that's properly secured with the right permissions, the right access control on it and the right backup solution. Because if you don't, when something happens, you're going to find out that there's data all over the place that you didn't know about and now it becomes a bit of a mess to try and uncover. In my experience, the cloud has really complicated this for businesses because before the cloud, when they had an on-premise server and you asked them, where do we store data? They said, it's there in the corner, sitting in the hard drives in that server and we know where it is. Everyone's got an X drive or an S drive or something mapped to their computer and that's where we store our company data. But now with the cloud, of course, we've got SharePoint, we've got OneDrive, we've got all sorts of other things going on. We find out that one department within the business is going to set up their own Dropbox because that was the easy way for them to share data within their team, right? So if you're storing your data in the cloud, I do sympathize with businesses because I know it can be difficult to really understand where the data lives because it's not very tangible. You can't see it, right? And so this is something that we need to kind of help businesses get a handle on to where they're storing the data and ensuring that all staff are storing data in the same place. Now, of course, with email and data and things comes the importance of backup. And I would say at least eight times out of 10, when I ask people about their backup solution, they don't know. And that's understandable because IT companies are pretty bad at explaining to their customers about things like this because quite often it's seen as, well, it's something they don't need to know about, it's very technical, they're not going to understand it, etc, etc. But if you're running a business, it's not really acceptable for you to not know what kind of backup solution that you have in place. And the two things that are really important when it comes to backup is your recovery time objectives and recovery point objectives, which basically translates into how much time is it going to take to recover your data in the event of a data loss and how much data are you going to lose? Because the thing is, when it comes to a backup solution, you're always going to lose some data, right? Because if you've got a daily backup, the backup ran at midnight last night, and then you have a system failure or a hard disk and a server fails at three o'clock the next day, you're going back to the backup it was taken at midnight last night. So you're going to lose everything that was done from say 9 a.m. till 3 p.m. that day. And even if you're backing up your data every hour, you're potentially going to lose an hour's worth of data loss. But I think it's fair to say that an hour's worth of data loss is much better than losing six or seven or a whole day's worth of the work that your team's done, right? So just understanding how much data that you stand to lose is really important. And it changes for all businesses because some businesses consume data really quickly and some will not create much data on a day-to-day basis. So it's really making sure that you have the right system in place that suits your business. And then, of course, the recovery time. So how long is it going to take to recover? Because if you find out that it was going to take five days to recover your systems and you say, well, 
five days is not really sustainable for us. We need to be back up and running within 24 hours or say two days at the most. Then if you've got a backup system that is not going to be able to recover within that time scale, then you don't have something that's suitable for your business. And these are simple, basic qu questions to, to have. It's, you don't have to be an IT professional to understand what I'm explaining here. It's about understanding your business and making sure that you have the right systems that suit your way of working and suit your business environment. But regardless of everything I've just said, the important thing is to ensure that you at least have a working backup in place because having any form of backup is better than no backup at all, let's face it. And when it comes to Microsoft 365 or Office 365 and your email data, your SharePoint data, it's absolutely critical that that data has been backed up as well. So many times I've been in meetings where people just assume that Microsoft is backing up their data and that's just not true. I've actually got some other more in-depth episodes about this, so you can go back and look through some of the episodes can't remember exactly which episode it is, but we might just put a link to that in the show notes. But it basically explains the shared responsibility model and why you need to take responsibility for the data and email and things you put into Microsoft 365. And lastly, we're going to talk about phone systems. Now, I think it's fair to say that the pandemic has made a lot of businesses realise that they don't have a phone system that is suitable for staff working from home. Because quite often, traditionally, phone systems were location dependent. There was a physical phone system installed, bolted to the wall somewhere in your office, and you had to be physically there in the building to be able to answer a call on a phone that was ringing. And of course, once everyone went start to work from home, businesses realized that, oh, how are we going to get people using our phone system? It's easy to get them access to their email and data and things, but how can we continue to operate our phone systems when everyone's sitting at their kitchen table? But there is another important reason why we need to focus on your business phone system at the moment. And that is because in a few years from now, in 2025, there's going to be the ISDN switch off. And basically what that means is BT are turning off a lot of the services that traditional on-premise phone systems rely on. So the time is ticking already. I do have an episode about this, actually. I did specifically talking about why you need to upgrade your phone system now in business because you can choose to either do it now proactively or you can wait until the last minute when you've been forced to do it. And that is never going to be a great option. I think because phones have been around like forever, we just take them for granted and we just think that a phone rings, you pick up and answer it. However, there's loads of cool features that you get from a modern cloud-based VoIP system that you probably don't realise. Things like voicemail to email, things like auto attendant, where you can set up the press one, press two for this, direct dial numbers, loads of cool features, handset list systems. A lot of businesses are choosing not to actually buy expensive desk phones now because people move around, they work from the office, work from home, work from Starbucks, wherever. So having software based phone where you just have a headset in your laptop or a mobile app on your smartphone, it's a really easy way to get access to your phone system wherever you are. So you can be driving down the motorway and you can be phoning a customer and it will phone out from your main number of your office, even though like you're driving down the motorway on your mobile phone. Really cool tech, right? So you don't have to then rely on staff using their personal devices to call customers and worrying about the customer getting the staff's mobile number and all that kind of stuff. And aside from that, the fact is we typically see a saving of between 40 and 60% on your current telecoms bills when you move to a cloud phone system. So definitely something you want to consider if you've not already done that. So there you go. Those are the five key areas that I discuss with new prospects during our initial discovery calls. And the reason that I focus on these five areas is purely because these are the essential basics that we need to get right. And there are also areas where we can pick up a lot of quick wins for businesses. So if people are using it all out of the email systems, if they've not got centralized data storage, if they don't have a suitable backup in place, and if they're still using a traditional on-premise phone systems, by migrating these services to a modern equivalent, we can not only give them a better system, make it more efficient, more robust, more resilient, we can quite often save them some money along the way too. So there you go. These are the essential IT systems that every business must get right. Of course, if anything I've discussed in this episode is something that has 
struck a chord with you, if there's anything in your business that's not quite right with any of these systems that we've been talking about today, then I offer a free 15 minute consultation. This is open to anybody that wants to book this in my diary. You just need to go to m3networks.co.uk forward slash meet Mark. You'll see my little calendar widget in there and you'll be able to pick a time that suits you. And you can choose whether we want to just have this as a mobile call or whether you want to get on video and have it as a Teams call. Choice is yours. Bye-bye. Texas is an M3 Networks podcast. Find out more at m3networks.co.uk.